The 16th President of America, Abraham Lincoln. Will the 16th President of Nigeria be the replica? We are all familiar with the Biblical Moses, mostly the Christians. A chosen child for an assignment and purpose, Moses could have been killed by Pharaoh's decree, but by divine intervention he was saved. He led his people, the Israelites, out of the bondage of Pharaoh in Egypt. He led them across the sea and the Jordan River. Egypt was considered a place of agony and suffering, but Moses brought them out. The question is, who will lead the suffering Nigerians out of the bonds of the usurpers? Instances of leaders that come to the rescue of their suffering peoples abound. Dr. Nelson Mandela in South Africa, Abraham Lincoln in the United States of America, Julius Caesar in the Italian Roman Empire, and our late chief Jeremiah Obafemi Awolowo. Our primary focus will be on Dr. Nelson, Abraham Lincoln, and late Obafemi Awolowo, according to Eduardo Galeano, history is referred to as the saying that never says goodbye but says later. Abraham Lincoln, the 16th American president, was known as a fighter in the Civil War in the U.S. and a major stakeholder in the enactment of the Emancipation Proclamation. Born in Kent, Turkey, he was a self-taught lawyer, legislator, and vocal opponent of slavery. He was said to be an honest man, therefore his nickname was Honest Abe. As recognition for his wonderful deed, a luxurious limousine is being manufactured in the U.S. that is named after him, Lincoln Limousine. Secondly, the leadership qualities of the late Chief Obafemi Awolowo are going to be critically looked into, and the president-elect can borrow from his wealth of experience, knowledge, and great performance during his premiership in the western region of Nigeria. He made the West the pace setter for all other regions because of his exemplary display of wisdom and knowledge in his performance as an individual and at the governmental level. The late Obafemi Awolowo was a nationalist who played a major role in the struggle for Nigeria's independence. He was a leader of political parties, an astute politician, a lawyer, and the editor of a newspaper outfit, and he helped to form many civil associations such as the Workers' Union, the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, the Produce Traders Association, the Nigeria Motor Transport Union, and a life patron of the Kegai Club. Awolowo was an author and he wrote many books to his credit, among which are The Travail of Democracy, My Match Through Prison, The Voice of Wisdom and Reason, and Path to Nigeria's Greatness. He introduced free universal primary education, and he built a citadel of learning at the University of Ife, now Obafemi Awolowo University, a rural health delivery program to every nook and cranny of the region, and an unavoidable housing scheme for the civil servants. On agriculture, he showed much interest in his introduction of policies that boosted agricultural farm produce. Nurseries were established, and cocoa and oil palm seedlings were planted in polythene bags and distributed freely to farmers for planting. Forestry reserves were established where various types of timber and wood seed were spread all over the region's riverine areas. Under this idea, farm settlements were also established for cocoa and oil palm plantations in rolls and columns for the effective allocation of farmers. Ranches were also created in multiple locations in the region, where cows, sheep and goats are reared along with poultry farming. He established the marketing board, the umbrella body that purchased cocoa and other products directly from the farmers, therefore, the government then exported the products. On sport and infrastructure, recreation centers were built, among which is the Liberty Stadium, Ibadan's construction of roads and bridges, the first in town as it then the dual carriageways at Dugby and Makola. The Western Regional Government under the premiership of the late Chief Awolowo paid higher salaries and wages than the federal government at the center. Therefore, other regions copied the ideas and policies of the government from the West, Based on the information he established in less than a year of the commencement of his administration, the WNTV slash WNBC. 
This was done in order to bring to the people's attention the policies of the government and its program. Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu has been at the forefront of our political struggle in Nigeria, fighting and clamoring for benevolent leadership and credible governance. He has always been on the side of the less privileged, but is trying to bring an improved living standard to the people around him. He was an accountant who worked with ExxonMobil and a senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria before the military junta of General Sunni Abacha took over the reign of government and thereby imposed themselves over the democratically elected government. Among the numerous steps he has taken on his path to becoming president, he was a member of the National Democratic Coalition, NADICO, the umbrella organization that fought the military to a standstill for the actualization of the June 12 elections that were aborted and therefore denied late Chief MKO Abiola from assuming his mandate as the winner of that election. Bola Tinubu became the frontline agitator for democracy, and he stood solidly behind Abiola. In the process, he was detained, harassed, and humiliated for fighting for his rights and those of many Nigerians that are enjoying democracy today. Later, he went on exile to America for the safety of his life and for the struggle to continue. Eventually, he became the governor of Lagos State, Nigeria. After his eight years of rule as governor of Lagos State, he wasn't fizzled out like many others as a child who came for the first and repeated times. He stood his ground and started positioning the people of his likeness in positions of authority, he made commissioners out of many, he fixes governors in states where his political ideas are bought. In 2014, he formed a coalition party from parties in Nigeria that would later retake power from the incumbent PDP. He, along with other strategic planners, formed themselves together and got the power in 2015, and Buhari became the president and commander-in-chief of the army forces. Through his political wizardry, he secured his party ticket to contest as his presidential flag-bearer. However, without being prejudiced, he ran the best campaign, and he toured almost every corner of Nigeria, telling the deliberating mind his plan for the future progress of Nigeria if they eventually gave him the mandate to become their president. An election was conducted on February 25, 2023, and he was announced the winner of that election. We are now looking at the leaders before him and how they impacted the environments to which they belong. However, if the president-elect could bring back the lost glory in Nigeria, an improved living standard of the citizen will be reclaimed, the security problem in the country will drastically reduce, while unemployment problem will reduce substantially. The abundance resources with which this country is endowed will be judiciously managed to the benefit and growth of the nation. Ask me what I want to be. I want to be a Lincoln. I want to be a historian whose mind must be clear, whose goal must be sharp, whose destination must be focused upon for developmental program. And once the foundation is right, Nigeria recovery is on your doorstep. The aforementioned leaders have come and gone, but the mark they left behind is speaking loudly for them. Thanks for watching this video. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons for notifications on the latest facts.